from Nice, France. It's the Cube covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and we're here at the Nutanix .next Conference in lovely Nice, France. We're inside the Acropolis Conference Center, and happy to have me wrap up the show coverage uh, is Adrian Bridgewater, who is a freelance contributor with uh, publications such as Forbes and Computer Weekly. Adrian, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, so Nutanix keeps calm inside the cloud tornado. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, I love a little, little bit cheeky, uh, um, but you know, Nutanix Calm, of course, is, is, is their product there. Um, but uh, a lot going on, a lot of churn in the industry. Uh, but it's, the, it's the headline that you put on, on, on Forbes yes, from the show here. Yes, thanks for reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how's the show been for you? It's been good. They, um, I mean, you know, the company's gone from strength to strength. We, we all know that. Um, it's, it's been a really sort of slick operation. Um, you know, we, 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 we come to these, a lot of these events and you expect, you know, some, some tangible news and some uh, opportunity to actually meet with the, the, the C-suite uh, guys. And we've had that. So it's, you know, no, no complaints overall. It's, it's, it's been a good event. Yeah, uh, absolutely, definitely uh, approachable. The Nutanix team uh, d does well with the press uh, and the analysts uh, to kind of pull us in, let us understand, because a lot of this area, I tell you, like hyper-converged infrastructure was not something that was readily accessible that most people knew, so they know they have to do some work. Uh, and even kind of enterprise cloud that they push out there, a lot of it, their messaging's a little ahead of where most of the market is. Uh, what, what's your experience been with them? Well, I think, um, <coughs> as I was kind of trying to say to uh, beforehand, um, <coughs> Diraj and team have taken a really um, ha a very hands-on uh, approach with the press. <coughs> he came um, uh, with you know two, two or three of them uh, came over to London four a good four or five years ago. Was it be five years ago? Four years ago, and kind of went around the table saying, "Does anybody kn who knows Nutanix?" And there was about ten press who did come out for that for that lunch, and there were a lot of kind of like you know fumbling, shuffled looks and, and, and you know, he didn't get a, he really didn't get a clear idea. I think people know Nutanix now. They understand, they have an idea of hyperconvergence. They, people are almost, you know, trying to understand what an abstraction layer is uh, and what the company's taking to market. So, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's kind of uh, democratizing uh, or the, the, the team are democratizing their actual technology proposition. And I think people are you know, really starting to understand where they sit in the cloud market. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm curious, you know, when you, you talk to customers, uh, when you look at kind of your, your readership there, it feels like by the time now people understand Nutanix and they might have gotten their arms around Hyperconverge, they're, they're off to the next thing. And they're talking about multi-cloud and they talked about edge computing some today and so some of the future technologies. Uh, do they get ahead of themselves in the marketing too much or are, are they doing a good job of kind of giving a full vision thought leadership? I think always their, their difficulty, difficulty within internally in Nutanix is that they really understand the cloud model. And um, so whether they've got ahead of themselves, I'm not sure. The, um, the c customers are only really getting to the verge of going cloud native with a, with a lot of their applications. And that's one of the things I've been looking at a lot recently. Um, and so it's kind of like, if they're, if that's the point that companies are at on the, uh, you know, on, on the hype cycle, then it's kind of well, what do they need to do to get that happening in their uh, organiz organizations, and it's, it, it, it's probably now the point where they're starting to ask, well, at what point would we use Nutanix in a, in a total implementation? So it's, I don't think they're ahead of themselves. I think they're, you know, they're obviously of the time and of the place because you know we're all focusing on them and and people are starting to understand what cloud computing means. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and something we've seen at Wikibon uh, from our research standpoint is there's still a large legacy base out there, um, and how much of that is going to convert into what we've been trying to call for years private cloud. We put out uh, some definitions about two years ago and said true private cloud because just virtualizing isn't enough, a little bit of orchestration uh, you know, isn't, isn't enough, uh, but you know, there is, in that multi-cloud world, Nutanix is going to say, we're not just for the data center in that piece, we're going to play and reach out to some of the public cloud, we're going to you know, live in this, uh, th th this world, so, yeah. Isn't there, I think there's almost a, a confusion um, between what is private cloud and what is public cloud, and, um, you know, because we're, we're almost getting vendors selling public cloud as private cloud, yes. which is, 
I, don't, I really don't think anyone's got their head around what the what, what the well, what the well, industry. So what to we do say is the public cloud really should be the, the 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 benchmark that you go against. I want the operational experience of the public cloud. That being said. Nobody's keeping up with Amazon. Three features a day, they're massive scale. You know, Microsoft and Google, I'm, I'm not discounting them. Even you know, Alibaba's there. Some others like Oracle and IBM have public cloud services, but you're never going to have the amount of services and access to that in, in the private cloud, but that's not necessarily what I need. <laughs> uh, to, but I need to be able to respond to the business. Agility is you know, the yeah. thing that they have. I need to uh, you know, be able to, what Nutanix delivered really well is, I can start small and I can expand in incremental pieces as opposed to kind of the monolithic infrastructure that we used to spend you know, 18 months building. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of where we see. Well, don't you think it's the services elements um, that, are that are falling into the toolkits that we're seeing Nutanix develop? Most of the announcements at the show have been related to you know, incremental service elements. So it's kind of, well, you know, what, what do I, you know, I've got my cloud computing infrastructure, I'm starting to build cloud native applications within the business, you know, what, what's, my, what's my DevOps offering like? What, what's my infrastructure management? To, you know, things, the Prism uh, user management interface, all of the sort of elements in that, yep. everything's starting to just get more finessed and more, um, more sophisticated. Spot on, Adrian, absolutely is. Calm is really going to be that, that platform that's going to allow them to deliver those services uh, to where the customers uh, need it. And even it, it, the, the naming of this, it's like, oh, they're object service. Oh, look at it, it's OSS. Oh, the compute thing, it's AC2. Uh, you know, so, sounds very AWS-like in, in how they name things as opposed to, you think, t you know, AHV reminded me a little bit more of, you know, following the VMware uh, mm -hmm. type of model. So absolutely, you know, Amazon, a bar that many companies in the industry they're following. If uh, you know Nutanix wants to become uh, an iconic software company, I'd, I'd love your you know commentary on that. Uh, you know, uh, looking after Amazon and what they're doing is not a bad model to follow. Yeah. No. No. Well, it, I think it's interesting to look at where they've come from in terms of um, wh what they used to describe themselves as, which was the hyperconvergence yeah. company, and they're not that now. Yeah. They're the enterprise cloud company, and I think we all. I think it was the Vienna conference, so it was the European leg, which this is, this time last year, that they changed the tagline. So you sort of walk into the, uh, the convention center and suddenly, they, they, you know, why aren't you the hyperconvergence company now? So it was kind of a proposition that they were going to be a broader platform play, um, which is the whole one, one, one OS, one click, one cloud. That's, that's how they're, 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 they're taking a bigger proposition to market now, don't you yeah. think? Um, a absolutely, and the, the, the term I heard that I kind of latched onto that was that iconic software company, and mm. all indications are they'll be 100% a software company you know, relatively soon. That means that it's not, oh, well I'll buy the super micro appliance from Nutanix. Well, how will that change the go-to-market? Uh, Sudish on the interview said, we're rechanging how we think our, you know, our sales structure and everything like that because mm. they've got their OEMs, of course, offer that full, fully integrated solutions. They're still going to do all the testing and make sure that everything goes out, but it will change a little bit the revenue. Uh, I actually had the chief revenue officer on and he right. talked about, he's like, hey, you know, software's got pretty good margins, right? Uh, it's like, yeah, well, okay, so margins will go up uh, you know, as a percentage standpoint, but overall revenue, um, as a public company, we'll see how they thread that needle. Um, I think they've got a nice window here because they just restated all of their software uh, revenue that they had had from their OEMs. They used to take it kind of over, I believe, a three-year chunk, and now they're putting it there. So mm. they've got this opportunity, hitting right around a billion dollars, change themselves and truly be a software company and considered a software company and measured as a software company uh, by Wall Street. Um, is that, 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 that's something that you, th you think outside of the Wall Street people and you know the impacts on the channel and well sales, I, or I think I think it was surprising to have to hear the guys uh, try and justify themselves as a software company. Yeah. I mean, because I think that's what we we perceive them to be anyway, and you know, and and then of course every business is a software, every company is a software company. You know, even a, a, a bakery from a, you know, literally every industry vertical, every, every, com every firm, every customer is having to redefine itself as a software company. So I, I don't think um, it was, I don't think, I, I just, you know, e even for Diraj to, to say um, that, you know, uh, cloud is digital, I would, you know, I think we assumed so, uh, so much of that, and, and it, it, I don't know why, they're, they're kind of going back to basics with some of this stuff, which is, but that's fine. I think there's a lot of clarification needs to be done. Um, to explain what you know, what these technologies are supposed to mean to customers. All right, uh, Adrian, uh, 
meetings, you, you talked to executives, probably got some sessions, maybe mm. talked to some customers. Uh, key takeaways that you had from the show, any new things you learned that you didn't know coming in? I really, my key takeaway is as the toolkit has expanded, it, um, and the question I, I think I posed, posed to Sudish was, what, what, what are you going to add next? And, it, and there was no sort of defined component. It, it, it seems to be quite a complete go-to-market proposition. So, you know, I think that their, uh, their, 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 their total house, and their, their shop is, is, is looking fairly, uh, fairly complete. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's validated. I think that's their market proposition. And they, it's not a term they use, but they, you know, I think that they're, they've got the credibility and the validation for what they're trying to get a market with. Yeah, uh, so it seems Nutanix known a little bit more in Europe now. H how are they doing overall in your opinion? Um, in terms of their, um, their recognition in, in amongst the customer base? I, I think, you know, it, it, they're on the up and up, aren't they? They, they you know, they, they get, they're getting the recognition amongst the, uh, um, the press. They're, they're, they're certainly, um, the, the, the customers here seem very happy. Um, they're, they're getting, you know, they've got, the, they got the blue chip clients that they want to use as, as use cases. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, across Europe, uh, it's good that they're moving locations um, for, for this conference. You know, we were in Vienna, we're now in France. I'm not sure where next year is. You know, they're, 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 they're making the spread um, and their footprint uh, substantial. Yeah, yeah. Any, any favorite spot for a sub 5,000 person event? For next year? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Italy, I think, yeah. yeah. Uh, so some like Milano? Or yeah, or yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, somewhere warmer south, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, yeah, I, I've heard they're actually not announcing the location uh, the, the, this week. They, right. they have narrowed it down. They're definitely uh, committed to doing the European show, but uh, definitely you know, look forward to uh, you know, <laughs> seeing where they go from here. Uh, Adrian, I want to give you the last words. Uh, any final things? Uh, what, what, what are you working on you know, outside of Nutanix, uh, things that kind of your audience and readership are, are mostly interested in? I think um, what I'm generally working on is day-to-day -day reporting on um, uh, my, my, my beat as a, as, a, as a journalist has always been, well, three words really, software application development. But a lot of the time I'm writing for people that aren't actually developers. So it's kind of just explaining what the mechanics um, of software op operations, what they are, what these things do. Because 10 years ago people didn't know what an app was, but the iPad arrived and we, we've started to understand so much more of what goes on inside the machines we're using. So I'm just trying to explain what people are, um, what the developers are using and how that's actually impacting the way the software that, that consumers use every day. That's what I do. All right, well, Adrian Bridgewater, appreciate you taking some of your, your words and bringing them out to the, to the video for our audience here and appreciate you helping me wrap up two days of coverage, wall to wall, heck, they're tearing this place down and we're, we were still uh, going strong here. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman for the whole team here at SiliconANGLE and beyond. Uh, appreciate you joining us. Be sure to check out all of our coverage, siliconangle.com for the written word, thecube.net for the videos, wikibon.com uh, for the research. Uh, is wrapping up, final word, Stu Miniman, thank you so much for watching theCUBE.